And recently one of my subscribers asked if you could measure the self-resonant frequency of a capacitor using an oscilloscope and a signal generator. And the quick answer is yes, and uh, we'll take a look at how you do that. But then also take a look at some of the caveats and subtleties uh, that you've got to be aware of when trying to make that measurement. So uh, I did a video several months ago on self-resonance, and uh, it really comes, I'll just quickly review some of that here. I'll post a link to that video in the show notes below this video. But uh, the bottom line is essentially uh, a capacitor, you know, you know, ideally looks like just a single capacitor, but in reality has got parasitic components, parasitic resistance and leakage, and primarily parasitic inductance in series with the capacitor. And uh, what happens is that at some frequency, the reactance of the parasitic inductance is going to be equal to the reactance of the capacitor itself. We call that the self-resonant frequency. And as we may remember from that previous video on resonance, a series resonance circuit looks like a dead short. So uh, for a capacitor, at low frequencies and you know below the self-resonant frequency, uh, it looks like a capacitor. The impedance drops as the frequency goes up. But when you reach that point where the capacitive and inductive reactants are equal, you'll get a little bit of a dip in that response, but then above that frequency, the impedance actually goes back up again. It looks inductive. Uh, so we essentially can just measure that by adjusting you know, the frequency of a signal going through the capacitor. So uh, the way we do that is really simple. Uh, we could take a signal generator, take its output, and normally you'd go through a, a 10 dB pad or 20 dB pad attenuator. Uh, the idea there is so that the signal generator doesn't see a huge change in impedance uh, you know, that the capacitor is going to show. But you know, reality is you can get away if you don't have one. Uh, you can just connect the signal generator generally directly to the capacitor and just put the capacitor from the signal generator output to ground and then probe uh, the voltage across the capacitor. Because at very low frequencies, the capacitive reactance is going to be high, and you'll see the signal there. As you turn the frequency up on the signal generator, the impedance of the capacitor starts going down, so the amount of voltage that you'll see here starts going down. Um, again, using the pad here makes it a little bit more predictable because you know you may or may not know what the output impedance of your signal generator is, so that's why it's a, a, generally a good idea to do that, but you could you know, play with it without it. And then, uh, so you tune the frequency up of the signal generator, watch the magnitude of the signal across the capacitor, and you'll reach some point where that signal is going to dip down to a minimum level, and then as you turn the frequency up more, the signal starts growing again. So that point of the dip is essentially the resonant frequency. So uh, I've got that kind of set up right here. Uh, I've got a 10 dB attenuator I built uh, just to put together here in this box. Um, that's just coming in from the signal generator into this little fixture. You can see I'm probing it here. I've got my capacitor under test, you know, sitting right there. And then uh, the, this other end is going to ground. You can see the probe for the ground here. So the signal generator is uh, back here. Uh, let's see, we can see it's uh, set right now to, uh, let's see, you've got the tripod on the camera here, about one megahertz. We're going to go play with that. And then the scope is looking at that signal. So if I simply take the frequency of the signal generator and start cranking it up, you can actually see as the frequency is going up, the signal level is going down that I'm measuring across that test capacitor. Uh, I can see if we take a look at the frequency, I'm a little over 4 megahertz here now. If we keep going, we'll see the point where the, frequency, the signal level has gone down to very, very small. If I keep going some more, you see that signal level begin to rise again. So what we need to do is just kind of rock back and forth to kind of find that minimum point. Okay, and it looks like right about there. And if we take a look at the frequency there, well, it's right around, uh, let's see, oh, 7.9 megahertz. So the self-resonant frequency of that capacitor is 7.9 megahertz. Now in my previous video, when we talked about this, we made some measurements using the grid dip meter. So let's see if that agrees. So I'll pop this capacitor out of here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just going to make a loop uh, out of this so that uh, this thing will just look like a little uh, parallel LC circuit, but uh, the self-resonant frequency will still be the same. So I just made a loop, kind of touch the two leads together here, and I'm going to uh, just kind of position this at the coil of my uh, 
grid dip meter here, turn the grid dip meter on, and if we adjust the frequency of the grid dip meter, we can actually see there's a dip in the meter there. If I keep going up in frequency, you see it comes back up again. So again, I rock back and forth until I get that dip. Okay, so right about there. So that, as far as the grid dip meter is concerned, that's the self-resonant frequency of that capacitor. And I'll go measure the frequency here. If we take a look at the scale, you can see it's showing right at about 8 megahertz or just a little bit below. And if we go couple it up here to the frequency counter, we can see I'm 7.9 megahertz, 7.96 megahertz. So these things basically agree, okay? So the answer is, yeah, you can measure self-resonant frequency with a signal generator and a scope. But there are some caveats we've got to think about. So remember the self-resonant frequency is a function of primarily the series inductance and the capacitance. Now the inductance is going to be proportional to at least two things. You know, it's certainly going to be you know, a function of the design of the capacitor itself. But it's also a function of the lead length, okay, so shorter leads or longer leads. And it's even a function of how the leads are dressed because, you know, inductance, among other things, is proportional to the loop area. So if the leads are close together, it's going to have a lower inductance than if they're spread apart. And we can actually see this. If I stick this capacitor back in my fixture here again, and see if I can do this here. Boom. Back in my fixture, okay. And uh, we're going to take a look at this. So there's, that's kind of the situation we were in before. Let me spread the leads out on this thing, kind of make it like a little bit of a loop here. So I'm just going to kind of spread these leads out, make a little bit of a you know, larger loop there with those leads. And now if we take a look at this and uh, I adjust the frequency here again, okay, now it looks like the minimum is right about here. And if we look at the frequency, now we're at 7.1 megahertz instead of 7.9. It went down about 10%. So, dressing the leads had a big difference, or about a 10% difference in self-resonant frequency. So that's one of the caveats you got to think about. So if you wanted to build a fixture, you really wanted to try to mimic, you know, how the the, the capacitor is going to be mounted. Now, even more important than that is, uh, you know, than how the leads are dressed is the lead length. Certainly, if you're going to build a circuit with this capacitor, you probably wouldn't use this uh, inch and a half, you know, lead length or so that's on this capacitor here. It's probably going to be mounted to a circuit board and the lead length is going to be shorter. Now how much of an effect will that have? Well, let's go take a look at that. I'm just going to take uh, my clippers here and cut these leads down to something that's more realistic if this thing was mounted in a circuit board. Okay. And uh, this is a good lesson too. Um, if you're going to use anything at any kind of RF frequencies, you want to keep lead length short. We're going to see why in a moment. Okay. So now I've got this capacitor with the leads a lot shorter. Let's stick that in the fixture here again. Okay, so get that stuck in there. So now that kind of is better simulating that capacitor being mounted to a circuit board. And let's look at the, uh, the scope. So now if I adjust frequency, you can see that at that same frequency, that same seven megahertz, I've got a larger signal. So it's kind of interesting that a shorter lead length on the capacitor made it have a higher impedance at this seven megahertz. But now if I turn the frequency up, I can see that signal is still going down in frequency or down in amplitude, okay? And uh, got to keep going here, and then the signal started to come back up again, all right? So I can actually see that I've actually increased the self-resonant frequency quite substantially. I'm gonna change the sensitivity on the scope here to make it a little bit easier to see where the minimum is, okay? So I can see at this frequency here, which is now close to 25, 26 megahertz, my signal's coming back up again. So I'll, let me bring the frequency back down. Okay, there's kind of a minimum and now it's popping back up again. So let's bring the frequency back up again until I hit that minimum, probably right about here. And now let's look at the frequency. 17 and a half megahertz, okay? So there's a big difference between having a capacitor with long leads like this that had a self-resonant frequency of you know, seven to eight megahertz. And now uh, with the short leads that are, you know, which is most likely what you'd have in a circuit board situation, that self-resonant frequency has, you know, gone up by about two and a half times to uh, close to 18 megahertz. So the answer is yes, you can make the measurements this way, but you do have to be careful about the configuration of your fixture, make all the lead lengths short, and make sure the capacitor's got a lead length that's, you know, similar to what you'd use on the circuit board. Thanks again for watching.